Let me just start out by prefacing that this base will not be for everyone, but I've received multiple requests for a layout slash footprint of the base that I've been using for the past few videos. Mainly, all bases I do are freehand, but all will roughly turn out very similar to the final build of this one. There are many features that this base does not include when it comes to normal meta bases, such as wide gaps, disconnectable externals, and more. But don't get me wrong, as just a solo, I have used this base to defend onlines against Zergs with 10 or more players, so it definitely does the job. Plus, the main benefit of this base is that all these features that I listed that this base does not have can all be added to the footprint with just a little bit of work. I just personally do not use them in my builds. There's plenty of benefits to this base though. To start out, for a small group or a farming solo like myself, this base definitely has a reasonable upkeep, where the max amount of time you're going to be able to get on it is 28 hours, which you don't see often for bases this size anymore. Externals are optional and easy to set up for grief protection, and there are plenty of angles to peek when defending online raids, which is mainly what this base is suited for. This base also provides plenty of floors and room to spread out your loot, so if raiders do come to offline you, it'll take a good amount of rockets to secure everything. The base starts out with a basic footprint, it's a triangle, squares around it, and then triangles to fill it in. From here, it doesn't matter which side, you can pick any side of the base and just cap it in and build a little starter room. Now this right here, while you farm up, can be used as your starter. It has enough room to fit a few large boxes, furnaces, and workbench, and everything you'll need in the early game. Once you're ready to expand, put walls around the whole base and build a half high jump up. Seal the roof in and place a door. This will allow you to move your furnaces out of your starter if you are wanting more room, as well as put up more boxes for storage space. And this setup is all based on personal preference, but this is how I tend to set it up. Next is where I tend to set up all the foundations for the honeycomb. The honeycomb, pretty simple, squares off each of the squares and then triangles to fill it all in. This will allow you to build a half high jump up to the second floor or just use a furnace. Once you have the foundy set up, feel free to wrap it in with walls with two doorways on each side. This is the door setup I personally use, but it is all personal preference. This brings us to the second floor. We will wrap this whole floor in with walls except add a door frame opposite to the other door. This will be our entrance. To the side of that, I add a window with a jump up to the next floor, allowing me to have a peek if someone goes through doors raiding. Once again, this floor can be set up with boxes slash deployables to your liking, but this is my personal setup. Floor 3 is nearly an identical setup, but this is the first floor that I have a bedroom on. Usually, I just do the bed locker combo, gives you ease of access to kits, so if you're getting online, you have a chance of defending. Everything else is all personal preference, just add a jump up to the left side of the door, and now we're making it to the peaks floor. The peaks in and of themselves are pretty simple, but in order to do them, you will need to build the outer walls up to the height that you have the base at currently. This will allow you to continue building up. Start out the peaks by placing triangles off the outer walls of the square foundations like this. Make sure these triangles are placed in this order though, or they will not clip together properly and it will make them unable to place. Now continue placing triangles off each side of the base like so, and finish it off by placing triangle floors on the first one. This will create the design shown. Now you repeat this on each side and then fill in the rest with triangles. This next part is up to you if you want to do it or not, but you can place siren lights to stop laddering into your peaks. I personally do not do this because I will have turrets later to cover these angles, but if you want to, it isn't a bad idea. Once again, you'll be walling in all this, so just follow these steps. Just a forewarning though, this base is not very cheap when building up due to the amount of floors, especially if you were in a smaller group or solo like me. So I don't recommend rushing it and living out of the first two to three floors for a bit until moving on to these points. This is of course all relative to your situation in game though. This next floor will be our main shooting floor. I do something a little different and I like to have windows just in case in an online the group gets control of my shooting floor. This allows me to scout for plays against them so I recommend doing this but you can also wall it in if you'd prefer that. As for deployables, I like to have at least a level 2 workbench up here to craft meds and ammo if you lose your main loot regardless of which floor it's on. And as well, you need a bed and a locker for quick defense. As for this window right here, you can also replace this with a wall if you don't want people to be able to see into your locker and bedroom, but I usually go with a reinforced armored window just to add that little bit of protection. The shooting floor placement is kind of similar to the peaks with three triangles going off each square to start. From there, just follow the placement.
To start out the shooting floor, I go around and place door frames in front of the gaps on each side like this. Just a little tip, I'm sure most of you base builders know this, but always place these on the right side because if you place them on the left side, the door will open the wrong way and it won't work properly. When you have enough metal frags, go around and place all your embrasures and also place the doors in with key locks and keep them open most of the time unless you need to jump out. Once again, I do another window floor on my roof, same as the one below, just in case people land on my roof and I have to defend a top down. This one I definitely recommend to have over the other one for your shooting floor because this one is way more necessary. And in here, I like to have a bed and possibly two lockers so I could kit up quick and never run out. This brings us to our roof, which is relatively simple. Off each triangle you place a triangle roof, and off each square you place a square roof. That'll bring it together just like this, which is exactly what you want. Now due to clans being in love with MLRSing me, I tend to upgrade the roof to metal pretty quickly. And then off the top of the roof, I build three up, put triangles off of that, and that's our windmill placement. Now since I know all my viewers are constantly controlling the servers they play on, this roof design gives you plenty of room for vending machines to sell all your extra guns or other items, as well as another bed spawn where you can put some kits that they might not be expecting. On top of this, if you do have SAM sites, put those up there. Usually you want only two, but I do three, just in case I have the extra scrap, because why not? This leaves us with upgrading the base. As you get the materials, I recommend upgrading the whole base to at least sheet metal. Usually I make the inner portion all high qual. That does leave you with a high upkeep of about 325 high qual though. So you can also only high qual just the one floor that your main loot's on. Just know it's gonna be a little more obvious where your loot is at. This brings us to turret placement. I recommend placing your first few on your roof because if you are a solo slash a small group, it is very hard to defend against top downs when you are outnumbered. From there, I usually put three turrets on my shooting floor viewing all angles, same as the peak, one under the jump up of my main loot floor and the rest in the compound, which is optional. I set up three externals off the squares of the base. My method is fairly easy to do. Build two squares off the base, demolish the first one and place a triangle. Then go five squares out, cap it with two triangles, which will hold your external TC. This, I recommend having a garage door and window on, but that is completely up to you. As for the gatehouses, I go off the third square of the external build out and build like this. Go off a of square three for a larger compound and go off a of square two for a smaller compound. It's personal preference. Now placing the compound walls can be a little difficult, but nothing too crazy. As long as you place them with them lined up like this with the vertical embrasure, you'll have a peak on both sides, which will be really good against door campers and people that might get into your compound. As for large furnaces, oil refineries, and everything like that, you really just place them as needed. You can set up plenty of good turret angles by building off the external foundations and half walling it, as well as ones off the triangle touching the base. This should definitely defend your compound against anyone that tries to build in. And overall, that's pretty much the base, boys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. I'm just going to say now, this base isn't for everyone at all. This is just what I personally enjoy. There are plenty of other bases out there that are easier to build and more protected, but for everyone who wanted to know what it was, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks boys, have a good one.